so good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Japan. Welcome to Tokyo. Welcome to Dial Kage Training. I'm Greg Story. I'm the president of Dial Kage Training in Japan. And we're going to do a couple of things this morning. I'm going to teach you a little bit about presentation skills. How about that? I didn't think you're going to get an extra bonus, right? And then you're going to hear about doing business in Japan. <coughs> so I presume in your current studies, and as soon as you get into business, you have to do a lot of presenting skills. You do a lot of that. And you can check to see if I'm doing any good. When you look at these little blue cards, you know what those little blue cards on the table there? These are the mechanics of presenting. And you see there are six, six mechanical points listed there. The first one, what's the first one say? Eyes. Eyes, right? So, when I was at university, I had a professor teaching Japanese history. And for the entire semester that he taught Japanese history, he didn't look at any of us. He looked at a point, sort of back of the room, just below the ceiling, and talked to that point for the whole lecture, for a whole semester. <laughs> that was unique. So eyes, there it says, what does it say? It says six... Six seconds, six seconds each. Six seconds, six seconds each. If you think of a baseball diamond, I'm from Australia, so I know nothing about baseball. Cricket, okay, baseball, not so good, but they tell me that in a baseball diamond they have left field, center field, right field. And they have inner field, and they have the outer field. That's your audience, like today. Here's my left field, here's my center field, here's my right field, here's my inner field, you're my outer field. The trick in presenting though is to make sure you're engaging people from all of those sectors. And you will have seen speakers who will stand here and they'll give their whole talk to this side of the room, as if that part of the room doesn't exist, or they'll talk to the people in the front, or like my professor, they'll talk to nobody at the back. So when you're speaking, you want to engage your audience. If you're giving a report to your classmates or your company, engage your audience. Your eyes are very, very powerful. Six seconds, it says six seconds. now. What's your name? Vivian. Vivian. Now, if I look at Vivian, and I just keep staring at Vivian for longer than six seconds, Vivian's thinking, psycho axe murderer. <laughs> Why is this guy staring at me continuously? This is getting very uncomfortable. Right? And that's true. So six seconds means that's about the max. You want to make that direct eye contact with somebody speaking, and then you switch off, and you pick out somebody else and you make direct eye contact for about six seconds, and then you pick somebody else, and you talk to them, and you just keep doing this through your whole talk. So about six seconds is enough. If it's one or two, it's sort of fake eye contact. It's like politicians, you know? They're not actually looking at anyone at all, but it looks like they're trying to make eye contact. So that's the first thing. So make sure all sectors, people at the very back, see, now what's your name, the lady at the back there? Daphne. Sorry? Daphne. Can't hear you. Daphne. Danny, she's hiding, right? She thinks, I'm good. I'm on the back here, no one's gonna notice me, I can go to sleep, I can get up my mobile phone, I can check my stock market, how am I doing my shares, you know? No, you make sure you get them all engaged. Look at her, look at Danny, and again, the people at the extremes, get them involved, right? Get them involved. What's the second point there, what does it say? Number two. Face, right? Now, most people think this thing here is the key point. Go do a presentation, spend all your time on the PowerPoint, work out what slides you're going to use, and then make sure everyone looks here and present here. But that's not the case. I'm standing on your left of this screen. Now you'll find that most functions, events, facilities are set up the other way. The podium or whatever is set up on that side. Bad. We read from left to right. Even in Japanese these days, you know, you're reading from left to right a lot of times in presentations. So what you want is look at my face, then look at the screen. I must control this screen. The screen must not control me. So you're making your eye contact, using your face. So if it's something surprising, look surprised. If something's shocking, look shocked. If something's sad, look sad. If something happy, look happy. If something serious, look serious. So your face and your words must link up. 
Okay. There was a study done in the 1960s by Professor Moravia, and he found that when what you're saying, the words, are not matched by the way you're saying it, people become distracted. And only 7% get the word message. They get to look at other things. When he did this in the 60s, they were looking at the tie or the shoes. If it's ladies, they're definitely looking at the shoes, right? Check the shoes out straight away, you know those shoes. Okay, so you're looking at something else besides the speaker. Body language, voice tone, you're not listening to the words. Today, it's merciless. In public speaking, training, it's merciless. Now comes the phone, under the table. Not paying attention anymore. We've got nanoseconds to grab people's attention. So your face, not this thing, becomes very important to grab attention. What's the next one? Voice. Voice. Pause? Was it pause? Voice. 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 Sorry, voice. Now, Chinese has got four tones. Right? So you have a rhythmic voice tonal variety in Chinese. English too. Most Western languages the same. Japanese, though, is very tough. Anyone here study Japanese? Well, Japan is no longer number one, that's for sure, right? Not one single person, okay? When I first came to Japan, I'm studying Japanese. I'm speaking Japanese like a foreigner. I'm saying, Itakushi wa? Iki ni? Iki masu? Up and down, up and down. And the Japanese professor is saying, No, 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 no! Flat, flat, flat! Monotone. So Japanese is a monotone language with no great rise and fall in tonal variety. Guaranteed to put people to sleep. Immediately. <laughs> which is what most Japanese audiences do very quickly. So you've got to have some tonal variety. Now, if it's a flat language like Japanese, you come a tonal variety, you've got speed. Slow it down. Speed it up. Make it soft. Make it soft. Make it loud. Right? So you can change, you can switch up your language. Strength and speed. Soft, speed, fast, slow. To get that variety, even if there's no tonal variation, that's how you keep audiences' attention. If you speak really strong, we're going to have an hour-long lecture on the Japanese economy. Look out! Right? You'll be dead within five minutes. Right? Just like too much power. But if I talk like this, oh now you can't hear me. You're dying as well. So sometimes strong, sometimes soft. Mix it up. Not just one strength the whole time. But sometimes we forget that. We forget that. So, have some variety, keep the attention of your audience, because we are competing with handheld devices these days for people's attention. No question about that. What's next? Gesture. Gestures, yes. Now, when you hold a gesture and you just keep holding it, after about 10 to 15 seconds, the power of that gesture dies. It just dies. It goes right down. And it just becomes annoying. So you get people who have no gestures. All the varieties, right? Why? Don't know what to do with the hands. Don't know what to do with the hands, so don't employ the hands. Words need to be backed up with power. It could be the power of a gesture. It could be one thing. It could be two things. It could be three things. You see, all these little gestures that lend power to the words you're making. So, but you've got to be like a tap. You turn the gestures on, and then you turn them off again. You don't leave it out there all the time. It's on, off, on, off. Break it up. <coughs> and if you're using your face and your voice, people don't even know where your hands are. And I, my hands are just by my side now, very natural position. You're not even paying attention to my hands because you're looking at my face and listening to my voice. So when I bring the gesture up, Gives extra power to the words. What's the next one? Pause. Pause, okay? When we're nervous, we speed up. The first public speech I gave in my life was here in Japan. It's 1980. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think now, 1983. Now, I'd avoided public speaking very very effectively up until that time because I didn't want to do it. I didn't know how to do it. I was scared of it. I avoided it completely. 
But in 1983, I had to give my very first public speech. Just to make it interesting, I gave it in Japanese. Now, my Japanese wasn't much good in 1983. So I had it all written down, you see. So I read the whole thing. I was a bit nervous. First public speech. I'm doing it in Japanese. Fear factor's pretty high. This is a 25-minute speech. Knocked that baby over in eight minutes. What do you do with the rest of the time, right? I was nervous. I sped up. I really feel sorry for those students. They were grad. They were students who were going to a prep school to get into a university, and they were, uh, you know, just about to graduate. I was the guest speaker. Killed a lot of them. Just actually killed them. So pauses are good. When we get nervous, you just take a little break there, like I just did then. Doesn't seem weird, does it? Just put a little pause in there, that'll help you to re-evaluate how am I going speed-wise. Gather your own thoughts, it also helps your audience to digest, because often if you're giving a lot of information, it's like a tsunami wave, you know? It's just one huge amount of data and information after another, just sweeping over each other. And then like four points ago, you've got no idea what was four points ago, because you've just been consumed by all this new stuff, it's gone. So, Pauses give your audience a little bit of time, let it sink in. Gives you time. If you're getting a bit nervous speeding up, regroup, gather your thoughts, keep going. What's next? Posture. Posture. Okay, here's very typical speaking posture for ladies. I don't know why ladies do that, but they do that a lot. Here it is for guys. <laughs> doesn't look that professional, does it? If you're speaking as a professional, for ladies, probably a little bit less than shoulder width. Guys, about shoulder width on the feet, 50 50 weight displacement. Now, that is an incredibly simple equation. You don't need advanced science degree or maths degree from Polytechnic U to understand a 50 50 weight displacement. And I teach people this. And they get up here to present, and suddenly it's 70-30, just like that. I don't know why that is, but it often is like that. So when we stand with our weight evenly displaced, unlock the knees a little bit, because usually they're shaking like that anyway, right? <laughs> unlock the knees a little bit, stand tall. Stand tall. It gives you a more professional look. Simple, simple things. Now, keep these cards, stick them in your wallet, your purse, and when you've got to get up and you've got to give a presentation, and I'm sure you do lots of them, just have a quick look at these six points and remind yourself, oh yeah, eye contact, oh yeah, include the whole room, pauses, gestures, voice control, posture, simple things, these are just mechanics of speaking. Because our job is not to make this the focus. Our job is to make this the focus and keep people's attention in a world which has got major attention deficit problem. In your generation, it's massive. It's massive. This will be interesting to see how it goes. So try that. Language is irrelevant. Chinese, English, Japanese, doesn't matter. All of these things apply. 